Different, different knots, flavors. The philosophy, right? So, like, uh, like right hand, left hand agnostic at this point, but we're both righties, so we're going to show you from a right-handed perspective. Um, obviously, lefty is just going to be the reverse of this. Um, but you know, traditional shooting stance. You know, one of the biggest debates is how do we stand when we're shooting? Um, I know when we're coming up in the SEAL teams, this is like how we were taught. You know, yeah, it, it was like a semi, semi, semi offset stagger, right? Almost yeah. a sugar foot, but not really like a strong yeah. side back, really, really wide base, but. It was more like a, a lateral wide. And then and like everything a, was basically center ram. Yep. So the draw, Air everything. Um, yeah. It was weird. It was a lot of sitting back. And then if you did anything, it was it wasn't um, it wasn't like flat foot Philly. We're gonna lock it all to the rear. It was always a step forward and a lean, which gives me super weak back here. Like it's strong for a push, but it's not stable. It makes me want to go this way. So if I lose my footing, that's how I go. If I, if I bridge myself. <laughs> And then no, I'm go back to that, like how we were taught the old school way, kind of like, yeah, like wider base. So now when you're really getting into it, you're going to naturally just drop that strong side back. <laughs> like if you, if I was to say, all right, hey, DJ, just messing around, throw a freaking 60 round drum and flip it to full auto. You're going to do that because yeah. you're going to look like a jackass if you stand there like this and try to just absorb <laughs> this recoil in an air chair, right? You're just going to naturally do this. So why not just start with that strong side back, right? I'm in an athletic stance. The only difference between uh, a traditional like boxing, kickboxing, fighting, you know, stand-up style stance is um, when we're shooting, we actually point our toes forward towards the target. But those traditional fighting stances, they keep their hip open because they're going to generate a lot of power from the hip. Um, whereas we're using those hips and the ground and the posterior chain to kind of find stability and lock everything in, and we lock our hips um, in orientation towards where uh, where the target is. Um, and we'll go over reasons why, but. One of the biggest reasons why is recoil management, right? So if I have my hip open and I go into this massive long shot string, where's it going to want to run? It's going to want want to run to the weakest point, which is where that hip is open, up and out. Um, but if I turn that thing in, where DJ's going to turn that thing in, lock it in, he's going to dig in the ground with his toes, lock that calf, lock that hamstring, and lock that uh, lock that glute. It's going to really lock that whole posterior chain in, find stability like in a freaking kickstand. Whereas the old stance, if I'm standing here like this, I'm finding stability out in nowhere right like through my spine into nowhere because it's not it's got nowhere to go whereas if I, if I drop that thing back now there's where my stability is you know supple leopard yep. supple leopard supple leopard man like i'm just in there like a you know coiled coiled ready to fight right so whether i have a direction change left right lateral four uh, left lateral uh, <coughs> diagonal right if i want to break back here i've already allowed myself there right like, as opposed to here i've got to make a step and then a move direction change. I'm here, I can change direction anywhere I need to go. Here, 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 right? It just allows me more mobility um, and stability. So go ahead, get back in that, that shooting stance, right? Shooting stance, the difference is toes more oriented towards uh, towards that 12 o'clock position and locking that thing in. Hamstrings engage for static shooting. And then when it's time to move, we just break them and we just punch. Yeah. But toes aren't aligned, but I also preach I hate watching people slung through fucking life like this, waiting to be a victim. Just point your toes forward and walk normal, and then it gets super easy to shoot like that because you've been doing it your entire adult life. Yeah. Like it shouldn't be anything, it shouldn't be anything different. If you're looking where you want to walk anyway. If you just point your toes that way, everything comes into your field of view much easier. And that's like <laughs> one that's of the reasons why we wear like be looking down anyway. So when I see <laughs> people that are getting ready to shoot, the low ready, and they're staring right there. I have no fucking idea why. Because as soon as they hear, eh, they're gonna do this, and then bring that gun up and do some weird shit. Yeah. Yeah, so now we've talked about the lower half of the body from the ground up, right? Uh, ground, feet, all the way up to the posterior chain. Now we're into the spine. 
this is where uh, we find that this stance is awesome for not just static shooting, but for moving and shooting and being able to disconnect the upper body from the lower body. So uh, we, we act like a, you know, like a tank turret. Basically like I'm on a gyro, this is, my, this is my gyro motor system and then I can run this turret wherever I need to go, change those hips, I can change direction. Even if my target's oriented downrange here, change direction here, change direction here, right? Like it allows much more sta stable platform to shoot from and a much more mobile platform to run from. So, so even, from a, even from a static, just, just a range of motion, if I just do this and I go traditional, if I was gonna hit something as hard as I could, I'd drop my foot back. But if we go just range of motion, Clear and safe? Yep, clear and safe. Okay. If I drive this thing out and then I bring it to the left as far as I can go before I hit resistance, I can only go to the center beam. If I roll this thing over two inches and I do the exact same thing, and now I scan, like, that's just body mechanics. It gives me more range of motion than by doing this. I can't do it physically. So all the guys that want to say it's more, it's easier to shoot being lax today's with your back foot, I'd argue you don't have as much range of motion because you can see it. So when we're out there practicing, like try it, man, two inches. Like yeah. two inches makes a difference. Yeah, and again, it's like and everything in life. What are you training for anyways? Like I have to be, if I'm gonna throw that rifle, that pistol, whatever it is out there, like it's one to 30, whatever's in that magazine, I gotta be ready to run from one to that thing goes empty and reload and go again yeah. with accuracy. I can't be throwing rounds everywhere. Like no. I've gotta be ready no, to especially go. Especially not this fucking day and age. You throw a round today, you are, it's over for you. So yeah, that's where like we lock this all in. I'm in a heads up position. I'm already scanning. Nothing is a surprise to me. By the time the weapon system comes to my eye line, I've already been looking down range and I'm just bringing it to my eye line. There's, there's nothing, it's like the same thing as like, driving a race car or riding a motorcycle you're not staring at the front fender on the dirt bike or on the on the moto like so the road surprises you the turn surprises you same thing if you're in a car you're not staring at your hood emblem you're staring down the road so nothing surprises you so, um, we, so when we talk about that we talk about head position if i locked it into a vice and i couldn't move and i present the pistol to my eye line it should be there because i'm looking right where i want to hit if i start getting this shit going on it's not adding stability. Yeah, you're closing distance to the target by six inches, which one, it's super slow, it's unstable, and you're not you're not really getting anything from it. I guarantee you the round will go faster from here if I just throw this thing up and I'm already looking at break the shot than gaining the six inches <laughs> throwing it out there. You but, know, but like, you, like I guarantee you it'll be faster. I'm, I'm not harping on it. Like we all grew up doing it. For I'm sure. Saying, I remember now it. Now that I I don't have to I don't have to do what everybody else makes me do and I can do whatever I want. This is what I feel is the best solution, is to keep my head up, make everything as universal as possible. That way I don't know 50 styles of Kung Fu. I know one style that does everything. My stance is the same for carbine, for pistol. If I'm gonna punch you in the face, if I'm gonna do anything. Running a blade. Yeah, like if I'm gonna push a truck right now as hard as I can, this is exactly the state I'm going to be in. I'm gonna drop my weight, I'm gonna shove this fucking thing. If I have to push late across the room, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm not doing it from here. I'm gonna do it from right here, I'm gonna launch. Like everything comes from this. It's not making it harder, it's making it easier so you can do it under duress when someone's trying to beat you to death. Like, yeah. That's how you survive, you do everything the same. If you don't, if you have 55, 55 styles of Kung Fu and one breaks down, it's over. That's why they invented MMA. It's not rocket science. Just know how to do it all. The, the closer you can make them all the same, you just burn a, burn a rep. Every time you shoot pistol, I'm burning a carbine lower half rep.